So I've always wondered how come there's no Figma equivalent of architecture? In many ways, it's understandable because architectural design process involves many different steps involving many different specialists collaborating in a very complex and heavy model. Denied. However, a new company called Snapchat is up for the challenge of creating the leading cloud-based collaboration platform for architects and interior designers. So they invited me to try out their platform. So here I am to test it out. So let's take a look. So nothing beats a real life example. I'm going to go ahead and pull up this RFP I found from the city of Vancouver where I live in. And we will be using this as an example to get our project scaffolded. In order to get started, and I'll create a new project. And I'll use feet slash inches. And we will start with a blank canvas. Okay, there are a couple things I want to do here. So number one is I just want to start with a location. So it is going to be the project address, which is right here. I'll put that in. And I will also ask Snapchat to include buildings from this location. And boom, look at that. Just this on its own, I think makes Snapchat already pretty valuable because it's able to pinpoint the location of your project and import 3D buildings. So this is going to be really nice to get started with. And next thing I want to do is actually look at the RFP and get Snapchat to import the program. So in order to do so, I'm going to click on program, which opens a new tab. And here you're presented with a very familiar UI, which basically looks like Excel. And here you can start defining your own program. But instead of me actually going back and forth between the actual you know, RFP document. I'm just going to drop this in to the helper AI on the left over here and allow AI to fill this in. So I'll attach the design brief over here and, and my instructions is going to be very simple. Reference the attached RFP requirements and create a program table based on that. Okay, look at that. So let's double check to make sure that the information is correct. So occupancy is 177 um, residential units, which is correct. And total uh, floor area ratio should be around this much, which is also correct. Should definitely double check all the information that AI is generating. But overall, it seems like everything is looking pretty good. Okay, now I can switch back over to the design tab. And as you can see, we they have basically taken all the requirements and turned them into these little blocks. Now there's a bit of an overlap going on, so I'm gonna go ahead and move our site out of the way. Okay, so let's see. So each color represents the program um, department. So as you can see, the smaller blocks are studio and the slightly bigger ones are one bed, two bed, three bed. And there are on the left side of the Y axis, there is like a total space created as like a, you know, one huge block. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and delete these guys. So I'm going to choose select tool and remove them. So now that we have the program blocks ready, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create our site. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and delete this massing model that came with the site. And I'll choose rectangle. And from here, you can actually enter in the precise dimensions of your site as well. So if you know the actual surveying data, you can do that. And one of the important things you have to do about the site area is that you have to rename this geometry into site. That prevents this area, this rectangle from becoming a box. So as you can see, this is completely flat. This area will be used to calculate the footprint as well as GFA later down the road. Okay, now from here, I'm going to start drawing our actual building. So using rectangle tool, again, I'm going to create a little area. And if you, if I don't rename this area, as you can see, this turns into a three dimensional geometry. I'll go back to the 2D view and use line tool to start delineating some spaces. So I'm going to create a central corridor in the middle like this. 
And in terms of the depth of this corridor, I'll give it about like six feet. And for the front, I will assign this to commercial spaces. And then the back can be residential, maybe amenity spaces. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now that we have created these areas, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this above one level. Duplicate above, and that creates the plan number two. Now, I don't want this to be associated with the level below, so I'm gonna click on make unique and change this into residential units. Okay. Now from here, I'm gonna start subdividing this space. I think I want this to be about a thousand square foot. So let's see what happens if we squeeze this down. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, let's make the width about 27. Okay, now, and I'm gonna rename this as, let's say, okay, three bedroom unit, and I'm gonna start arraying this. So what's really cool about this tool is that it gives you this copy and array, which allows you to do this. And I'm gonna type in 27 feet because that's the value that we used. Okay, so I'll say 27, zero inches. And in terms of the number of copies, I think. Okay, let's say we'll do seven and hit enter. Okay, cool. And What's cool about copy geometry is that you can extend them or manipulate them and then everyone will react the same way. So for example, if I want there to be a bit of an overhang, I can probably do that. So let's stick to that one. And for the last unit over here, I might wanna make this a little bit bigger. So let's say I'll make this unique and stretch it all the way to the edge over there. Okay, that looks good. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy this over using Control C and V and put it on the other side as well. Now let's take a look in a 3D view. Now you can get an idea of how this application works. Um, you can draw and push and pull almost like SketchUp in 2D space and then everything will be actualized in 3D. And you can do the similar manipulation in 3D space as well. So if I want to change something like this, you know, you can do that in 3D space. Okay, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and start duplicating some of these so that we can fulfill the requirements for our building. So I'm gonna go ahead, right click and duplicate above. And I guess the shortcut is control arrow key up. So I'm gonna do that. All right, okay, so we are six levels up. Let's see how that looks in 3D. Okay, so that looks about right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start changing some things about the balcony. So let's go ahead and click on some of these units where I want to make some special adjustments. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on these, holding down control, and make these unique. And I'm gonna use the push and pull feature to push them back a little bit. Let's say about yay much and do the same for these guys. And there's an automatic snapping feature, so you can make sure everything is aligning properly. I'll do the same over here, push and pull. Maybe up to there. It's cool how we can do it across the entire building. So I'm gonna fast forward this part just to demonstrate how you can model things. This really reminds me of SketchUp in many ways, how you can just like point and click and drag and drop and everything is really easy to manipulate. It's very intuitive. The next thing I want to show you is the BIM feature. So if you head over to the BIM tab, there are a bunch of tools that show up on the right over here. But before we get there, let me click on sketch to BIM. So what this as is asking you to do is specify the requirements for, you know, the overall building parts. So you can specify the wall thickness and parapet walls, floor slab thickness, and they will automatically convert your massing model into a BIM model. Let's take a look at this in action. And it did actually go through and this is the result that we have. 
And if you zoom in, as you can see, all the buildings have been created with the specification that we asked for. Okay, cool. Now, next thing I want to try out is export into Revit. So in order to do so, all you have to do is go over to the top left corner over here and choose export and export the model. And for the model type, you can choose from a bunch of different formats, but since we want to use Revit, we will do that and just hit export. Okay, let's take a look at the Revit model. Okay, so I did have to convert this from 2023 version to 2025, but this is actually, it actually made it. So let me go ahead over to the 3D view and cool. I guess there is the building and I guess there's the slab and there are the walls and you can kind of get started from there. Like Snapchat gets you this like very basic model really quickly. So if you just want to, if you want to skip this step where you have to individually analyze the RFP and then model all these programs by hand one by one, this could be a really good option to get started with. And as you can see, the elevations are already set. So if I go over to the views, let's take a look at the floor plans. Yep. Yeah. So it's a really basic model, but yeah, everything is set up already. So yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, the walls are there and you can do more detailing from here on out. I also wanted to show you that you can set up a bunch of 3D views like this and populate your scene with built-in 3D models like these palm trees. And once your views are ready, you can bring them over to the AI rendering tool like this. And from here, you can choose the amount of creativity versus accuracy, model type, and customize a prompt for your rendering and just hit generate. And within minutes, Snapchat will generate a realistic 3D rendering of your building. Another really cool tool to keep in mind is that you can also do a built-in solar study within Snapchat, so you don't have to pay for expensive third-party tools for this. Once modeling, editing, and landscaping is complete, you can switch over to present tab at the top over here. And from here, you can begin to create sheets. And from here, you can bring in any of the views that you have created so far. So for example, we'll bring in the site plan with a solar study on it and we'll scale it to fit the paper. And then on the side, we'll bring in some perspectives with more solar studies and you can add legends like this. You can continue to populate the sheets using the views that you have created and customize your title blocks and do anything you want to do. And everything is really easy to use. They are drag and drop. You can bring in any images that you want to reference as well, including the AI generated images that are created within Snapchat. Once you're ready, you can hit export, choose the file name and voila, your package is ready for delivery. So they're still at a very early stage, but you can kind of see the potential of this platform. You can see that the team really understands the early stage of architectural design and created a tool that can potentially improve our workflow significantly. Snapshoot is completely free to get started right now, so I strongly encourage you to try it out and see how it fits into your workflow. That being said, thanks again for tuning in and stay tuned for more interesting updates and tools in the architectural industry. I'll see you in the next one.